QYES means Queer Youth Exploring Spirituality, a ministry of Wesley United Methodist Church in Cicero. It's a safe place where LGBTQ youth and their allies can feel loved, accepted, and empowered. For more, we welcome Alicia Vega, Youth Program Coordinator for Wesley United Methodist Church. And we also welcome Katia Maison, an 18-year-old QYES leader and one of the co-founders of the group. And we welcome 19-year-old Jay Sean Purtis, who learned about QYES at the Center on Halstead Youth Program. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thanks. Alicia, let's start with you and just tell us how QYES got started at Wesley United Methodist Church. Sure. Um, my wife and I, we were looking for a spiritual home, and we had learned about Wesley as part of the Reconciling Ministries Network. Uh, which is a network of United Methodist uh, churches that are LGBTQ affirming. And through our membership with the church, the church asked us what ministry we wanted to start. And we know that uh, for LGBTQ youth um, and religion, there's a lot of um, oppression and uh, negativity around that. So we decided we wanted to start a youth ministry and uh, specifically for LGBT youth. And we were excited to know that the Methodist Church is very supportive. Uh, they've provided us with a tremendous amount of funding. Uh, we were able to hire two youth leaders, uh, which we mentor to basically run the program. So it's a youth-led program. And um, you know, our goal is really to create safe spaces for young people to come and explore what does it mean to be spiritual, specifically youth who've been um, pushed out of their own churches um, because of how they identify. And Katia, tell us a little bit about how you got involved and the retreat that was planned for last summer. Alicia was at the time um, my upstairs neighbor, so we we were able we had contacts through that. We had two retreats. Uh, one retreat was just um, between us to kind of um, get us closer together and create a foundation. Then we had um, that following summer another retreat. Um, which Jay Sean was a part of, and um, it was it was really great. There was so much diversity in um, the retreat. Uh, we had people coming in from different parts of uh, Chicago and the Chicagoland area. We had uh, people. We had young people. Uh, we had um, uh, folks who were adults. We had. Um, folks who had different gender identities and sexual orientations and religious backgrounds. So it was really diverse and um, we had a lot of different perspectives and we were able to talk about, you know, what is a safe space and um, how can uh, spirituality, you know, coexist in a safe space that really is inclusive of LGBTQ youth. And Jay Sean, tell us a little bit about your spiritual journey and, and what did you get out of the retreat? Well, when I heard about the retreat, retreat at Center on Halstead, I was kind of surprised because the Center on Halstead do a lot of retreats, but not as in mostly about camps. So I was like, I want to go and I want to experience something new and different from what I experienced on other retreats with the Center. Um, once I joined and called to like join the group for the retreat. I was kind of I was kind of nervous because it was out of my comfort zone of going somewhere else that I'd never been before. Have you faced a lot of negativity with your sexual identity and and your spirituality? Have you has it been a conflict for you? Most of the time, but not all the time. I kind of brush it off to the side instead of bringing it forward. Mm -hmm. And with this retreat that I went to, it kind of told me I have to like mostly stand up now and tell more people that like I don't like what you're doing and what you're doing is like making an effect on other people. Katya, what is the struggle how, for a lot of youth that are LGBTQ? A lot of religious institutions um, say that being queer is wrong. And that's a form of oppression that's mm -hmm. invalidating someone's identity as being queer. Um, and so um, a, a lot of times uh, young people, especially if their families are very religious um, and believe that um, 
you know, being queer is wrong, they won't come out to their parents. And Alicia, why is this outreach ministry so important, you think, especially with the younger generation? I've worked in youth services for over 20 years in multiple different organizations. And one thing that I learned is that there is a really a crisis across the country of uh, queer LGBT youth living on the streets because their parents have put them out because of how they identify. And many of those parents have a struggle with being part of their religious community and loving their children. And the result of that is young people being unsafe, living on the streets, um, you know, being at risk for suicide, being at risk for so many different things. And so this ministry is really about reaching those young people and the families and the parents too um, before that tragedy happens, before that young person is put out, before the young person is put in a place where they, they don't value themselves at such a high level that they're willing to take their lives because they're suffering so much. So our ministry is about reaching those young people and those parents before that happens. Mm -hmm. um, and really one of the big things we'll be doing this year with our outreach is reaching out to organizations that are working with homeless youth to really embrace them to be part of the of the retreat as well. And Jay Sean, tell us a little bit about your coming out and your your story and your spiritual journey. How difficult was that? Well, my coming out was very weird because I used to talk on the phone with a guy and I always tell my mom and dad it was a it was a girl. One day end up like basically they answered the phone and asked who was this and I was like kind of in that motion of scared about what they were going to say. But they were um, accepting to it. But after that, it was like long talks and talking about this is a phase and this is going to go away. And Katia, tell us a little bit about your story and your spiritual journey and what kind of struggles you faced. I actually um, identify um, as Jewish now. Um, and I grew up in a Catholic home. Um, and I converted uh, for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that uh, I did some research on um, my ancestry and I found out that my, that the family on my mom's side um, is actually um, they they were Jewish and they they lived in Spain and I just found that so interesting that I wanted to kind of take back a part of my heritage that had been lost. And tell us about your coming out story. Was it hard to um, was that a struggle as well with family with your religion being growing up Catholic? So I actually haven't um, come out. Um, I didn't I identified as a straight ally for the longest time and um, this very recently actually I realized that I identify as pansexual and not straight and um, you know that was something new to me um, and I, I haven't really told anyone and until now, I guess. <laughs> um, and just because I didn't, I never, I don't know, I never found like the need to. So how are the retreats in the future gonna address like spiritual formation and, and dealing with this struggle and this conflict with um, being LGBTQ and some people's be religious beliefs? And when maybe some people, you know, referring back to the Bible. So um, we are hoping um, in the future to have you know different uh, passages from the Bible or different um, and not only the Bible but for, uh, uh, different examples from different uh, religious backgrounds like um, that affirm queer identities and you know that talk about queer identities and that accept queer identities and love queer identities and you know telling the young people like you can be religious and you can you can be queer as well. And you know, these two things can coexist and hopefully they find, you know, some, they're, they're able to reconcile. Thank you so much for all three of you for joining us and telling us a little bit more about QS. Yes. Thank you. And I'm Anne-Marie Gerhardt for Different Drummers and the Greater Chicago Broadcast Ministries, Keep the Faith.